Hello and welcome. I am Lian Won and this is Rappler Talk. We are again on a search for a new Chief Justice of the Supreme Court following the retirement of Teresita Leonardo de Castro after a very short term as Chief Justice. And with that, there's again a lot of interest in the Supreme Court. And to help us better understand the court, we, uh, we have with us today the former spokesperson of the Supreme Court, the one you have seen for the last five years delivering the decisions of the High Court, Attorney Ted Te. Attorney Ted, good day. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for your invitation. Attorney Seth, siguro, ano, um, para sa mga nanonood, bakit ka daw ba nag-resign from the <laughs> High Court? Uh, the short answer is, it was time. Uh, I had initially, personally planned really to stay for about three years because in my own estimation, that was about the time I needed to you know, take a look at what the PIO could do and how we could improve the systems in the PIO. The PIO is a very small office. And, but it has a lot of functions that have, were not maximized. So we were able to do that. I was able to do that with my team. And so I thought that, you know, three years was enough time. And I really had intended to tender earlier. But, uh, well, the fourth year of my stay there uh, turned out to be a bit complicated because that was the time when things started to get difficult for the court, you know, not only for the former Chief Justice, but also for the court. So I decided to stay a bit just to see how I could help. And then, of course, when the Coaranto decision was rendered uh, and the former Chief Justice was removed from office, uh, I tendered my resignation with Chief Justice De Castro when she was appointed because my stay really was also coterminous with the former Chief Justice. As head of the PIO and as the spokesperson, what was the um, siguro main problem that you wanted to address when it comes to delivering decisions and making sure that the public understands these decisions accurately? I think it has always been, it has always been the uh, accessibility, not only in terms of the actual decision itself, but accessibility in terms of language. What was the court saying here in this decision? and uh, how we could better explain it, how we could better make it accessible to a larger public, and how we could make the decision itself, the text itself, accessible. That was what we were looking at when, when I entered the PIO, because even as a practicing lawyer before, that was my difficulty. I, you know, I would find it difficult to look for a new decision. So part of the things I really wanted to do was to help uh, the court come up with a system wherein we could more easily and more effectively uh, make the decisions accessible because my belief my my belief as PIO chief really was my role really simply was to be a channel and that was the f that was what I told the media when I was introduced as PIO chief that my role really was as a channel from the court to the public through the media and so that was what I wanted to do so that was the main challenge and then of course in that process, we started to look at other ways to make it more accessible. So we went into, we used technology. We went into uh, live streaming of oral arguments. We went into the use of Twitter to, to tweet cast the entire oral arguments, to give out announcements, you know, urgent announcements. So I think that worked out pretty well for us. But the main, the main thing we really wanted to do was make the decisions accessible, language-wise, as well as the actual text. As you said, nga, mm. internet helped a lot in a lot of ways. But mm. because of the advent of the internet also, dumami yung mga influencers and yes. those who tweet their opinions mm. or their mm. appreciation or their interpretation of the decision. So, minsan, eh, for a very short attention span audience, mm. hindi naman sila magbabasa ng 350-page decision. And they turn mm. to these influencers to better understand. Mm. I mean, does, did that help the court or...? Well, yes and no. Uh, yes, in the sense that it elevated the profile of the court. Uh, people started to get interested in the court, what it was doing. But maybe sometimes for the wrong reasons. You know, because, uh, again, because there was nothing official and uh, there was nothing we could say until it was official or uh, unless I was authorized to say it. There was sometimes a time lag. And as you, as you know, in <laughs> social media, whatever you read, uh, you know, sticks with you. If you like it, it sticks with you. If you don't like it, then you disregard it. So it was good and bad. No? So that was one of the challenges we had to face to make sure that we could come out with the official text and maybe a short briefer, give the text language, help reporters understand what the, what the text meant no? uh, without going beyond it, without offering commentary, without offering speculation, opinion. No? 
So that was, that was challenging because again, social media is very quick, uh, attention span is very short. And so, yes, that, that part was particularly challenging for us. I remember parang nagkagulo. Yeah. One of the decisions yeah. na and dami dami interpretation was the TRO on the RH bill. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. parang there was a time na parang inaddress pa ni President Duterte sa sona niya and CJ Sereno had to come out with a with a statement. Pag pag ganun ba, mm -hmm. I mean, are you forced to tweet something or Well, the the process was that whenever there would be something like that, I would bring it up with the chief or with the specific member of the court to which the case was you know, assigned or who's in charge of the case. And if the chief or the member of the court would say, okay, let's address that, you know, uh, then we would. Sometimes they would ask my opinion, do we need to say anything about this? And my usual, you know, my default position would be, you know, unless it is absolutely grossly wrong, then don't, right? Because uh, it would be difficult to wade in because this is highly political, it would you know, affect how the court uh, deals with uh, its, its work as, a, as an adjudicative body. So my default would always be on the side of restraint, not to address it unless it is absolutely silence. necessary. Yes, well, the so-called dignified silence, yes, yes. So that was where we would be. But uh, there would be times wherein you know, the chief or the member of the court would say, you know what, I think we should address it. Uh, because you know these are what people are saying already, so we would we would craft a short statement, and again, our bias would be towards a very short factual correction, you know, uh, without nothing much going beyond the actual text. We would sometimes just quote the text and say this is what the court said and not this. So even the language was restrained. With what's happening now, the negative perception about the Supreme Court, lalo na we're um, going off the Coranto, do you think um, dapat maging less restrained ang Supreme Court when it comes to dealing with the public? Well, you know, as an organ of government, negative perception will always be there. Eh? Uh, the, that's one thing I found out, you know, being, <laughs> being in the court. You, you cannot please everyone, so you, there will always be negative perceptions. And the, I think the only thing that the court should be really concerned with is whether the the, the negative perceptions are based on you know, false statements or false reporting. Pag hindi naman, pag totoo naman talaga yung nakasulat at because of that people come up with Reac negative, negative reactions, I don't think the court can change that reaction, di ba? I mean, the only thing the court can really do is to work harder to convince people that you know, they shouldn't draw a negative reaction from that. And the only way it can do that really is to come out with its work, uh, siguro more efficiently, uh, decide things more clearly, mga ganon. But other than that, I don't see how the court can really change its the opinion of the public if talagang totoo naman yung report. Because any decision that they come out with will always you know, be received uh, well by those who like it and negatively by those who don't like it. So that's not something that the court can change easily. And at least, kasi par naabutan mo rin naman yung one week ni CJ De Castro. What was her media policy ba nung nandun ka pa? Did Hindi naman say... kami nag-usap about the media policy because at that point, no, uh, I had already mentioned to her my intention to, to resign. And at that point, really, it was status quo for the, for the moment. And the fact that she asked my, my long-time deputy, no, to, she, was, she had been deputy even during the term of court ad maidas. And... Know, she wanted continuity in ho how things were going. You know, with sure little little changes in the way, style, more of style. This you know, is Attorney uh, Gleo Guerra. Attorney Gleo Guerra. You know, more of style in how it was written. Mga ganon. But I don't think there was any major shift in direction you know, in the sense that the court did not become more combative, did not become more aggressive in chasing down every story. Yes. You no, know? hindi, hindi nangyari yun, eh. But uh, siguro ganun. And, but I think one, one change is that the, the, the journalists were given more access to the, to at least to her, to the Chief Justice. No? Uh, the, I think the, the journalists were asked, were given one-to-one -one interviews. No? So that's, that's a matter of prefer, personal preference, I think, on her part. As a reporter, yung isa sa mga observation ko sa perception is, uh, whenever we live stream something about the like, flag ceremony mm -hmm. ng Supreme Court, sobrang negative yung reaction ng mga, at least sa uh, comments. But when you're inside the SE grounds, iba siya. Uh, parang, um, parang the, the, 
the employees are um, um, rejoicing, tapos may marching band, may red carpet. So parang sobrang conflicting yung negative from the outside to the mood in the inside. Tapos binigyan pa si Chief Justice De Castro ng award for restoring stability inside mm. the court. As an insider, I mean, how did she restore stability well, that maybe I, we didn't see? Or I wasn't the there anymore. No, I wasn't there anymore at that time uh, because I already I was already on terminal leave and had already left the court. Uh, and I was only based. I only saw the media reports of the of the Chief Justice's last flag ceremony, where she was welcomed. No, uh, well, mahirap sabihin kung ano yung nangyari doon, anong thought processes. No, but again, I think the historical record is there. Uh, the whether whether the members of the court like it or not, naging parang barometer kasi yung flag ceremony for. Yes. For acceptance, I don't know how that happened, but it happened, no. So the, the, the most recent from our memory, yung after na appoint ni Chief Justice Sereno, tapos hindi yes, nag-attend yung mga justices. Be, because you know, it, it, from an insider point of view, I think I can count the number of times I was not present at the flag ceremony. You know, it's either nakaliba ako, na naka official business ako, or may sakit ako pero bihira yun. No, I can. How about the justice? Is it regular for them to attend? Not all. Not all. So, you know, in terms of the reporting of kung sino wala, sino mm -hmm. nandun, uh, hindi big deal yun eh. Kasi hindi naman kasi talaga na, nakokompleto. No? Uh, I think nakokompleto na sila pag may funeral no? na dadating. No? So, in my f almost five years in the court, you know, I've been to the, f I've, I've attended the flag ceremony almost every week na may flag ceremony kami. Bihira, less than ten times ako hindi, hindi pumunta dun. And, you know, mag Alam mo kung sino regular sa nandun, no? At, uh, and again, hindi na ko kompleto yan. So that's why naging barometer siya and nagiging big deal kasi siguro na nakakatimbre yung media about that, no? But on an ordinary day, if you were to go to the court on an ordinary day when nothing is happening, yeah. you would see that you know, the flag ceremony is just that. No, it's a regular thing. All of the chief officers are there. No, some, sometimes some of the justices are there, sometimes they're not. Sometimes the chief is there, sometimes the senior justice is there. Pero again, you know, it's no big deal. It's part of the things we have to do. So yun. And usually, nagiging big thing lang siya pag may nag-retire, kasi last flag niya, or first flag niya, ganun lang. But other than those occasions, it's a normal flag ceremony. Uh, Kaya nagtataka ako, bakit, bakit siya naging barometer? Apart <laughs> from the attendance of the justices, yun, ano din eh, yung show of support ng employees, kasi it went from a sea of red nung yes. nagre-resign nila si Chief Justice Sereno to a sea of blue. Again, again because, yun nga eh, kasi nang, naging barometer siya. So it's a, it was a way of expressing something, right? Because alam nila na mayroong nagko-cover, right? So that, that became a very convenient way to express uh, sentiment. But uh, other than other than that, you know, ordinary flag ceremony namin. Siguro sir, ang tanong hmm. is, humupa ba yung tension nung umalis na si Chief Justice Seren? Alam mo, well, if you talk about tension, among employees, wala naman eh. No? I mean, we were, we were doing our jobs, right? We were doing our jobs. And for, again, the court is not monolithic. It's a huge organization. And so, and many of the people there have been there for a long time. No? And I was when I was new there, I made it a point to talk to many of these old timers, you know, find out what's going on, how to do my job, and they were very helpful. You know, di namin pinag-usapan politika, di namin pinag-usapan kung so insulated ka. ang Supreme Court from politics is what well, you're saying. I don't think you can ever be totally insulated, no, because again we function in a always in a political context. Eh hindi mo naman maiwasan yun because the Supreme Court is the third branch. So, but, you know, in the, in the sense that, you know, the, the working relationships are usually not affected by, by that, no? Uh, I think, nakita ko naman yun eh. Kasi even then, even though may mga protesta, no? Uh, nangyayari yun, pero during ordinary days, trabaho pa rin kami, di ba? So, hindi naman, wala namang ano, kumbaga, respetuhan lang na gusto mo magsuot ng ganyan, edi magsuot ka ng ganyan, di ba? So, ganun. Ganun yung situation nun. Sir, still on mm. the topic of mm. former Chief Justice Sereno, yung naging um, impeachment complaint sa kanya, uh, it, uh, naglaba siya ng mga detalye about her leadership or management, details that could have only come from inside the court. I mean, hindi naman malalaman yung mga ganong klaseng 
I mean, mm. do you call it like a mutiny by some of the people? And did you see signs that mm. it was gonna happen? Well, the the ju the justice, some of the justices testified. You no, know, there was an unbanked resolution. They yes. talked about it, and uh, they agreed that those some of those who were invited, if they wished, could testify, right? And they were given. They, w they gave each other very clear parameters on how to what they could testify on. But of course, pagdating dun sa house, syempre, siguro, depende sa appreciation nila ng tanong na ibinato sa kanila, then s some of them, you know, went beyond what the question asked. Some of them stayed within the parameters. Pero personal decision nila yon. As to whether there was a mutiny, hindi ko naman pwede sabihin siguro may mutiny, but... Definitely, yes, you're correct. There was some information that was internal. Yes. So, you know, and, but, hindi na bago yun eh, di ba? But did you see I'll, signs na parang nakinita nyo na mga early 20, 2017 siguro? Because I think, sil lag, hindi bago yun eh, kasi, you know that, di ba? Well, ako nga laging huling nakaalam, di ba? I always tell you, I'm the last to know because you guys are the first to know. There's, you know, it's like a sieve. Lumalabas talaga yung detalye eh. So, ganun. I mean, but siguro the, the one thing that was different here was because it was leading towards a, a formal proceeding. No? Unlike yung mga dati natin na mga sources say, mm. sources say, mga ganun. No? Everyday, everyday occurrence yan, every week occurrence yan. Pero ito kasi, merong patutunguhan na formal proceeding. So, yun doon lang nagkaiba. But, you know, parang naging fact of life namin yun eh. Now, we have to deal with those things, no? So, nabanggit mo na rin yung house, um, proceed, impeachment proceedings sa lower house. Mm -hmm. um, gusto lang ibalik yung viewers natin to the term of Chief Justice Hilario Davide. May ganyan ding lower house proceedings uh, investigating mm -hmm. the Judiciary Development Fund, mm -hmm. JDF. Tapos at that time, parang medyo awkward kasi they didn't want to compel the justices kasi nga, di ba, the gods of Padre Faura, you don't mm -hmm. want to drag them to the lower houses. Parang may resistance din from the SC. They didn't want to send anybody. Gusto lang nila mga auditor. Pero pagdating dun sa impeachment complaint kay CJ Sereno, it was voluntary. It was not a subpoena. It was an unbanked resolution allowing them to testify if they wanted to. Why the change, sir? Bakit I willing cannot, na silang I cannot pumunta? speak to that. You know, that's an internal thing that they did. There was an invitation from the House Committee on Justice and they deliberated on it. They agreed. They had a resolution. So beyond that, I don't think I can say much. I, I was not in the room. So I don't know what they discussed as to the reasons why they would allow it and how that became different from the, the complaint filed against Chief Justice Davide. You know? But you get Chief Justice Davide, it became part of a decision of the court, Francisco, you know, versus House of Representatives. So a uh, matter of record yun. But dito naman kay former CJ Sereno, they, the court and bank talked about it. Presumably they discussed, they deliberated. and. They agreed. So that's that's the resolution. Do you think mm. it was a mistake na yung mga gods of Padre Faura pumunta ng batasan para magsalita ng ganun? Marami silang, at marami silang sinabi, it was not a very um, restrained mm. testimony, maraming nasabi. Ako, I, I, I don't think I want to characterize it no, as, as a mistake. It's it's a resolution. No? I think history will judge kung ano mangyayari, mangyayari doon. No? Uh, and as an institution, I think the court is is or should be strong enough to, you know, to withstand. withstand that judgment. No? Uh, I don't think I'm in a position to characterize it as anything other than uh, something that the court itself agreed it would do. I am, you know, I am willing to give the justices the benefit that they had the, the benefit of discussion, they had the benefit of deliberation, and even argument, siguro. No? And, but in the end, they decided they would do this. No? So presumably, alam nila yung ginagawa nila. What do you yeah. think should be the biggest lesson from the Kowaranto episode, whether it's for the future Chief Justice or Supreme Court officials or even appointing presidents, ano yung dapat natutunan na nila at sana wag nang maulit? There are, there, there are decisions that the court has rendered no, in different stages of its history na, that turned out to be very instructive on the use of power. For example, you know, Marcos versus Manglapus, banning the remains of Marcos from traveling to the Philippines. Uh, yun, ano yun, only for this instance yun. And yung mga ganon, no? so the Davide impeachment 
only for that instance then because no one ever thought that you know uh, a former dictator would want to come back as a corpse and that the court would be asked to rule upon the right of a corpse to return uh, for a, f a chief justice could be sued for impeachment by a member of the house no? so mga ganun. so in terms of the coaranto decision in resereno no? uh, that the court has this occasion to you know to render specific guidance on what to do in these cases. So I am on record as saying I, did, I didn't agree with the decision. You know, I read it, I did not agree with the decision as a, as a lawyer, you know, as a lawyer. And so, but it's there, you know, it's there. It's, it's, it's instructive to, to law, lawyers and law students, future justices, judges currently, you know. So, ang siguro ang take away natin doon is that may, may kapangyarihan yung court at ang kapangyarihan talaga ng court ay nandun sa malinaw na malinaw na desisyon kung ano talagang gusto nilang gawin at ano yung basihan ng desisyon nila no? and beyond that no one else can you know ask for anything more no kung ano yung nakasulat doon yun na talagang basihan natin the only thing we can do is agree or disagree hindi naman natin pwedeng suwayin kasi yes. nandun na yun what so, mm, yun yung takeaway ko, that maybe the court, when it is faced with those kinds of decisions at specific stages of its existence, can take a look and say, this is, this is not and should not be just a decision for the moment. It is a decision for, that, you know, for the generations. So, dapat may foresight of what their decision could, how their decision could affect the Could future. actually affect, because, for, yeah, again, you know, the, 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 the the impeachment Francis the Francisco case for example the Marcos versus Manglapus even the burial decision no? those are those are very specific decisions that that affect generations so sir dun sa Republic versus Sereno ano tingin mo yung parang may far reaching effect well what part of the decision in a in a very direct way that you know the court basically interpreted the constitution as allowing a situation where a chief justice or a member of the court, no, not okay. just a chief, a member of the court could be removed on anything less than impeachment. That by itself is significant. At yun yung pinupoint out dati sa oral argument si Justice Kagiwa, no? what if a justice was mm. found to have cheated in one of the quizzes yung in law ganun, school? Uh, Pwedeng uh, integrity uh, issue and, na yun. And, and you know, the, 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 kumaga, the, the effects, no? we're now seeing that because Ngayon, ang, ang, ang buzzword dati nung in Resereno was void ab initio. And of course, that buzzword has continued. Yes. And it has continued outside of the court. No? Hindi na ngayon yung korte ang nagpapadek, pinapadeklara. No? Ngayon, kanya-kanya na. No? Kanya-kanya na. na o oh, void ab initio yan. No? So yun yung sinasabi ko, na may epekto yan eh. From an academic point of view, you know, I have to teach that decision. Yeah. I don't agree with it, but I have to teach that. Why? Because it's part of the law of the land. No, as an academic, I now have to say that. I have to say, oh, ito yung nangyari dito. Right? Uh, you have to read the main decision, not just the dissents. No? At ito yung sinasabi ng main decision. Ito yung sinasabi ng court. This is how we should read this particular provision. No? But again, nagtatake na life of its own eh. Ngayon, buzzword na yung void ab initio. Yes. Diba? Ganon. Doon na galing yun eh. So, lahat to ay nanggaling kay Solicitor General Jose Calida. Hindi naman siguro. <laughs> well, I mean, the co-warranto hmm. and the void ab initio and saka, sa kanya, sa OSG nanggaling. So, has there ever been a time in one of your classes where they ask about yung mga contentious decision and you found yourself in a situation where you had to explain but you didn't agree? Paano niyo yun sir ginagawa sa mga batang um, nag-aaral ng abogasyon? The nice thing about it is, is that as, a, as an academic, I have the constitutional right to academic freedom. You know, whether institutionally and institutionally and personally. So, you know, within the four walls of my classroom, I can actually <laughs> talk because yes. it's academic freedom. No? Nag off the record ka ba dun, sir? Kung hindi naman. Hindi naman, mo? pero hindi naman nag-tweet yung mga estudyante ko. Eh. <laughs> o hindi dapat sila nag-tweet, <laughs> dapat nag-aaral sila. Pero yun, ang, ang point naman dun is an academic should have the freedom to pursue. No? Because it's only in deconstructing a decision that you learn from it, totally you learn from it, di ba? Kasi kung hindi mo naman biyak-biyak in your decision, ang mangyayari doon, eh, talagang memorization, rote learning, kung ano lang yun, dito we want to be able to say, okay, look, this is the decision, I accept that it's the decision, I don't disagree with it, I, do, I don't agree with it, why? Because ganito, ganito, ganito. Now, 
the next time na may ganitong kaso, baka naman pwede natin tingnan to At doon po mapasok yung value ng separate opinions, whether concurring yes. or dissent. They don't bind. no They're not the decision. Yes. They don't bind anyone. They're basically just thinking out loud, justices thinking out loud. But of course, they have a value in the scheme of things because at some point in time, someone's gonna pick up the dissent and say, look, nagbago na yung circumstances. I think ito na yung dapat decision yes. natin. And it has happened many times. And pwede no? mo ring it-risk yung parang um, way of thinking ng isang justice sa opinion niya, sa susunod niyang opinion. Possible yun, yes. If, if, if a justice is consistent, then you will see that. You can almost predict it. No? Before nangyari yan, I mean, when Isagani Cruz was on the court, you could almost tell, pag civil liberties at pag violation of civil liberties, alam mo na magdi-dissent yan pag dininay mo. When Abraham Sarmiento was on the court, ganun ang mangyayari. Alam mo ka agad yan, magdi-dissent yan pagdating sa ganyan. So, bihirang-bihira yun eh, na, na magbabago sila dun sa pananaw nila. So, that's, that's the value of decisions like that. So, nabanggit mo na rin mm. yung parang judicial values ng mga mm. mahistrado. Sa U.S. Supreme Court, lagi kasing nakakarakterize yung um, SCOTUS na uh, is it left, is it right, mm. is it center, ganyan. It, it's hard for us to do that here. Parang wala naman tayong wala. left or yeah. right. We don't bakit, have that. Bakit ganun? Very specific sa court, sa U.S. Supreme Court, you know, because of the appointing power and because it's a lifetime appointment. Kaya nahabol talaga yun. Because, for example, if they appoint someone young, like the new, the new appointee, Judge Ka Justice Cabano, he's 50 plus. You know? If he's in good health, he can stay for another 40 years. No, and that's how many generations of Americans no, who will be affected. And not only Americans, everyone else no, uh, by, the, by his decisions. So that's why malaking bagay sa kanila yung direct appointment. Tapos sa kanila kasi, hindi naman pareho ng system natin na may JBC screening. Mm -hmm. Sa kanila pabaliktad. Mm -hmm. The President nominates and then submits to the Senate for advice and, cons and consent. Mm -hmm. So dun ngayon yung confirmation process. Dun ngayon nagbabakbakan. And so it is highly political because of course the Senate is highly political. That was the system that the constitutional framers of the 87 Constitution wanted to avoid. Na walang confirmation para hindi maging political. Yes. Kaya nagkaroon na JBC. But then again, ia-appoint pa rin sila ng presidente. Exactly. So, well, wala tayong magagawa doon because the president is really the appointing power. No? But the hope was that the JBC would be you know, the screener. Talagang sasalain. So that pagdating sa presidente, salang-sala. No? Ganun yun. But of course, syempre, uh, time would have, you know, would have given us these lessons. No? That Of course, the JBC is not a perfect institution. May mga changes na nangyari. No? May mga may mga procedures silang binago. So, that's a system now. That's why we don't have left or right. No? Kasi, una-una, hindi naman yun ang tinitingnan ng JBC. Ang tinitingnan ng JBC, because the criteria simply is integrity, yeah. probity, competence. Yun lang naman eh. So, hindi, hindi tinitingnan yung, yung effect of the court, the justices, on the, or their decisions, rather, on everyone else. That's the first. Second, uh, hindi natin tinitingnan masyado, no? with the exception of a few JBC members, yung track record. No? Uh, how extensively has this person written on this particular topic? No? Wala pa tayong ganong sistema na pagsasala. Sa US, grabe yung pagsasala nila. They will really look at everything you've written. And if you're a judge, how have you written on this? Civil liberties, yeah. on privacy, on freedom of expression, freedom of the press, uh, presidential power, no? separation of powers. Kasi may paper trail ka eh. Yun yung, dun ka nila nakikilala. Hindi nila tinitingnan masyado yung personality. Except for, let's say, you know, like, yung kay Kaba, no, na lumabas yung personality mm -hmm. niya because may nag-complain. But other than that, they look at the paper trail. And so, and the paper trail is, determi you know, determines how you, how you, yeah. you know, you, you view certain things. Kaya ka nalilabel na conservative, yes. liberal. Dito hindi natin tinitingnan masyado yun. No, we look at other things. Balik lang ako bahagya hmm. sa JBC process. Wouldn't you say na parang medyo na, na, nawala yung boses ng tao? Kasi sa, sa, sa US, it's, the, it's their representative who are gonna vote. And di ba may threatened pa sila na hmm. if you confirm him, I'm not gonna vote mm -hmm. for you dito. Dala, da, isa lang actually, isa lang per, per yes. chamber ang makakaboto. So what would you prefer? Yung present setup natin or would you rather na 
dadaan siya hindi sa... Ko, hindi ko nadaanan gaano yung, yung previous setup, no? yung may confirmation na yung actual na bakbakbakan sa commission appointments. But also looking at our experience with the commission appointments on previous appointments, no? executive branch for example, no? uh, mahirap din kasing daanan yun. No? Kasi because these are judges, these are justices. No? And to in order to get past the commission appointments, grabe yung hurdle na gagawin mo. Diba? So, siguro kung, kung gusto natin ibalik yung aspect na may representation, na may bosses yung tao, uh, perhaps some adjustment needs to be done in how the CA would, you know, would conduct its hearings no? on, on that. Kasi as, as it is, no? uh, minsan, very, very trivial. Mm -hmm. no? Ang ayaw ko sa'yo, Section 20, tapos ka na. No? Ganon. And so, I've seen and I've, I know people who have really... You know, done things no, that they normally would not do, talk to people they would normally not talk to, mm -hmm. para lang makalusot sa yeah. commission appointments. And that's a reality. No? And so, and these are, you know, these are good people who really just want to serve. Pero kailangan nilang daanan eh. So, I don't think I want that for judges and justices. Kasi una-una, umpisa pa lang, alam mo na, baka makokompromise to. Di ba? So, but the JBC also, no, Siguro, may, may konti paghihigpit naman siguro din na kailangan gawin. No? Uh, it's not a perfect system, but I think it's, it's a system that kahit pa paano is that working. Works. Is working. No? So, uh, siguro konting adjustment na lang in terms of how the JBC could tighten the screening. No? Uh, and then siguro, drawing out maybe in terms of the public interview. The public interview by itself is a significant step. No? In fact, it was... Something that uh, we're happy to, to say we pushed for when we were in flag. We pushed for it during the confirmation, during the selection for ombudsman many, many years ago. Why in JBC, uh, public interview? And now, because public interviews are live streamed or even you know, uh, covered by, Broadcast, by media, yeah. so meron ng mas focus doon, medyo may trans konting transparency na doon. But still, feeling ko kulang pa rin yung public interest eh. Doon sa, kasi kung hindi, kung hindi sexy yung, yung yes. hindi colorful yung character, eh walang makikinig eh. No? And so, the ideal there is that importante yung position niya. No? Dapat usisain natin, tingnan natin, ano ba sinasabi nito, ano ba sinabi na niya before, mm -hmm. eh ito ba nagbago ng posisyon? Bakit siya nagbago ng posisyon? Dahil lang ba gusto niya ma-appoint kaya nagbago ng posisyon? Dapat ganun yung tinitinan natin eh. Have you also observed na yung past JBC interviews medyo kulang sa mga ganong question? Depende kasi yun sa questioner. Depende sa, I mean, uh, I know the members of the JBC, I've, you know, I've seen them up close. Kanya-kanya style eh. Yun naman yun. Kasi they, they look for different things. But ganun naman ang job interview eh. And with every HR department, di ba? every HR practitioner will have different styles of eliciting what they want to see. So, yun naman, yung, yun naman yung problema doon. Kasi nga, it's really just a job interview. It's not even a disqualifying, disqualifying interview. It's really just, okay, what can you offer? Diba? Ganun lang yun eh. So, balik tayo sa consistency mm. ng mga justice. But wouldn't you say na over the years, parang medyo na, na, na parang nag-grouping na sila, parang justice, uh, dati, justice Sereno and Leonin and Carpio, sometimes Bernabe, Kagiwa would vote. Um, for the same thing and hindi then wag ka sila rin. justices hindi hindi ganoon ka consistent na that or maybe that we're group. just looking at unbank or major political cases kaya. yes that's a, that's a good point because if you read the the many division cases no ang daming cases sa division and these are ordinary appeals that they dispose of ang daming unanimous doon ang daming doon na uh, 50 no 41 no hindi hindi ganoon ka split of course, the unbanked decisions, the big constitutional questions, the high-profile yes. cases, yun yung talaga nakatoon yung tao. That, that's where we focus a lot of attention. The political cases, those are the colorful ones. Kaya dun natin nakikita na, ah, si ano pala, magkakampi. Pero hindi rin eh. Kasi makikita mo naman, there are some decisions na you would expect na itong, uh -huh. ito si A at si B ay magkakampi. Minsan hindi eh. Depende rin talaga dun sa appreciation ng issues. So... And there are, there are some issues na akal, akal, akala mo eh, mananalo yung side na to. Hindi rin. No? You will, we will not know it until they actually write it. 
they actually dis talk about it, deliberate on it, and then decide. No? This is one of the analysis that was uh, told to me. No, pag pagdating daw sa mga major constitutional questions, ang visible grouping daw is yung mga career judges, yung mga nag-rose the ranks from the judiciary, and then yung mga galing academe, kasi parang mm. mas medyo bias daw sila for the, yung mga career judges bias sila for the executive because they have been with the bureaucracy for for their for most of their lives so mas um, leaning towards sila sa ganung power and then the professors would be more not necessarily uh, not necessarily because again if you look at the composition of the court now no wala wala naman naging full-time academic diyan where kay let's say justice leonen no many of them have taught but not on a full-time basis okay so but if you talk about career career members of the judiciary justice bernabe yes. for example is a career member she has rendered decisions against the executive yes. no uh -huh. unanimous decisions at that no yan galing mtc yan hanggang supreme court she went through the ranks so hindi mo hindi natin masasabi yun eh no uh, so mahirap kasi siya eh na i-group no uh, i think that that's a ve that's a very siguro colorful way of describing no it attracts attention kasi ah, kampi -kampi, no? and always you know a story always needs a conflict a story always needs an antagonist and a protagonist but sometimes hindi eh sometimes unanimous lang talaga yung court no uh, nangyayari talaga yun sometimes hindi sila unanimous pero hindi mo akalain na ito yung magkakasama no? so uh, that's why it's always exciting to read the decisions it's always exciting to wait for them to say it Kasi pag hanggang hindi nila sinasabi, hindi mo talaga alam kung saan sila naka, nakakiling. So you mentioned Justice mm. Bernabe, oh nga, interesting siya. Would you call her, kasi some people call her the swing vote, yung parang hindi natin alam kung saan papanik si Justice Bernabe. So every time she speaks sa oral arguments, medyo nakikinig talaga yung mga observers. Hindi natin masasabing swing. Eh. We don't have a swing in the sense that the court is evenly divided and that she comes in the middle. No? But uh, I mentioned Justice Bernabe, earlier only because you know she's a career she's a career jurist went through all the courts mula mtc packet no and therefore you know to you would think that she would be beholden to the executive branch but again no, no she has she has decided cases as she has seen it no she, she calls it as she sees it and she has written majorities she has written unanimous decisions against the executive for example so uh, she wrote the condonation doctrine, there was a condonation striking doctrine. out the condonation oh, doctrine. Diba? So, uh, Idaf, for example, DAP, uh, well, DAP was the first uh, thing. Pero, yung, yung ganon, no? uh, these are career judges. Eh. So, hindi rin siguro madaling i, i pigeonhole into a category. Uh, from the point of view of journalism, that sucks kasi <laughs> pangit eh di ba? parang okay unanimous walang walang color eh di ba walang drama so we look for drama pero sometimes wala eh wala talaga drama that's why I sometimes tell you guys di ba it's boring eh <laughs> lahat lang magkakampi o oh, ganun so moving on to another topic on composition uh, sa huling bilang ko of the 179 justices appointed to the court since 1981 on and 80 oh, justice oh, Fernando na. 14, 14 lang ang babae. Is that mm. a problem? 14 out of the 180 in history? Well, it's a problem only in the sense that, you know, you're talking about 50% of the population easily, right? So, yes, but it's not just a problem that's unique to us. You know, it's a problem unique to uh, many courts, right? Even in the U.S. Supreme Court, diba? Sabi nga ni Justice Ginsburg, diba? The perfect court would be the perfect court would be have nine women on the court. So, uh, yes, in, yes, in the sense that, uh, siguro, nung nag-umpisa yung court, siyempre, mas konti yung babae na lawyer. No? Through the years, dumadami na. If you go to a law school now, you will easily see that the women outnumber the men. That's law students. You go to, you take a look at the roster of lawyers for the past how many years, maraming babae na nagiging abogado. So it's a matter of catching up na lang pag siguro, nila. And then, siguro inclination also of how many of them would apply. There, there are a lot of female judges who have been appointed. Ang dami. No? So, feeling ko, una, catching up. Tapos siguro, inclination nga whether they would really want to pursue this, ano, this, this particular path. No? 
uh, it is only in that sense that it's a, it's a problem. Kasi nga, uh, you, it's not a question anymore of the pool, eh, the size of the pool. Kasi lumaki na talaga yung size ng pool, maraming talaga. So it's a question now of uh, how many of them will apply, how many of them will persevere in you know, pushing through with their application for the judiciary, and now how many the appointing power will see us eligible or you know entitled to the to the to the seat so yun so we now have vacancies in the court also in the court of appeals i think sa sandigan meron pa so Madami pa oh tingnan Sandigan. natin kung ilan yung mag-aapply na female justices no so still on the topic mm. of female justices uh, i just want to quote yung isang recently released study by professor Bjorn Dressel of the Australian National University sabi niya based on empirical data that female justices are less likely to vote with the administration in power in high-profile cases. Have you observed that to be true? Or so, parang hindi yata. Parang, ewan ko lang ah. For the, except, uh, parang who are the contradictory... I, I, I'm, again, I don't, I don't think I have enough data to, you know, make a, make a generalization either way. But feeling ko, baka that might be too much of a generalization. Again, I don't know kung ano yung gano'n ka-extensive yung data niya. From but 1986 daw to 2014. So the whole, the whole of, the whole of the... Not every case, like post, I think... Post-Marcos. Yes, less mm. than 50, the most high-profile cases from 1986. So medyo hindi sa... sa Feeling ano. ko parang hindi eh. Again, I would, I, would, I would have to read all of the decisions that uh, were written by a female, a female ponente, no? But I, I don't, I don't think na... Isa pa sa point, uh, sa isa sa mga conclusion ng study nila. Kasi diba parang the Supreme Court laging kinikriticize na may barkadahan culture daw, the old boys club, ganun. So based on their stat Professor Dressel's study, meron daw talagang influence on how the justices vote based on their social network. So either law school or professional network. Tapos ang findings niya, so if kunyara tayong dalawa, we belong to the same law school, mm -hmm. we tend to have an informal discussion. And in that informal discussion, dun tayo nakakabuo ng, oh, ito yung iboboto natin. Have uh, you also observed that to be I, true also? Based on school affiliation alone, I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, and I don't think they, you know, they consort with each other simply on the basis na magka-graduate kami ng magkaparehong school. Diba? Hindi eh. They, they, I think they affiliate with each other in terms of, you know, do I like this person or not? Do I enjoy his or her company or not? Ganun eh. Kasi of course, you can't avoid that. They, they, these are human beings. They're social beings. So, may mga personal relationships yan within the court. So, but I don't think they form personal relationships on the basis of what school they come from. No? Fraternity? Uh, two, sorority? Pwede well, of course, the fraternities are there. Sororities are there. But even then, even on the basis of fraternity affiliations, I think there have been instances where, you know, members of the same fraternity have voted against each other. Justice, Justice Serena and Justice De Castro. Justice Velasco and, and Justice Carpio belong to the same fraternity. They have voted, you know, voted against each other many, many times. De Castro and Serena also comes come from... Hindi sila magkapareho eh. Pinag-Porsha sila pareho? Parang hindi. Parang alam ko Sigma Alpha si, oh, okay. si just, Chief Justice De Castro. But... Uh, Again, kung basis on fraternity, hindi siguro eh, no? But uh, there is some, you know, there there are networks that they Come will, at play. yeah, they will, they will, uh, they will look at, no? Anong network to sir? Like, were siguro, they appointed by the same president? Ganun ba yung? Hindi ko alam kung ganun ka, ganun ka laki yung factor na yun, kung they were, were they appointed by the same president. But for example, uh, kung ganun sila katagal na magkasama, for example, there, there's a, there was a time na marami silang da dating RTC judges. So, at magkaka, magkaka area, no? So, unavoidable yun. Unavoidable yun. Yeah. Kasi galing sila ng RTC pareho ng sabay. Yes. Diba? So, wala kang, wala kang magagawa doon. Talaga naging magaibigan yan kasi, I know, for example, the RTC judges there, uh, Justice Peralta, Justice Bersamin, okay. Justice Del Castillo, uh, Justice Jose Catral Mendoza, they all came from RTC QC. Justice Tiham also came from Justice uh, RTC QC. Marami dyan, mga dating RTC judges. And so, if you're an RTC judge, ano, magkakapareho ka na station, kahit pa paano, maging magkaibigan kayo. So, if you get promoted to the court together, you have a natural network na magkakasama kayo. 
doesn't mean that you always vote together. It doesn't mean that you always agree with each other. I don't think that that, that is a, something that we can generalize on. You have people from the same school who have disagreed with each other many times. Sa UP pa lang eh, hindi magkakasundo yung parati yung lahat ng taga-UP. Diba? So, hindi, hindi siguro ganun eh. I don't think it's that, it, I don't think it's that clear in terms of that network. So, I'm down to my mm. last two questions. Ito, tignan ko kung sasagot ka. So, do you have mm. a pick for Chief Justice? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Wala kang pick or hindi mo lang sasabihin? No, I don't have a pick. Pero sir, do you agree to the um, time-honored tradition of seniority na yung five most senior justices are the only ones na pwedeng mag-qualify? Okay, if you talk about seniority strictly, seniority would simply mean that as soon as the a chief justice retires, the next one should be appointed. That's seniority. Yun yun eh. Mm -hmm. that's, why, that's why we call uh, Justice Carpio, for example, who is number two, the senior, senior associate justice. He's the only one with that title. Kung merong umakyat ng number two, siya uli yung magiging senior associate justice. That's what senior, to me, ha, that's what seniority means. So if you're talking about seniority, automatically the number two becomes number one. Pag nawala yung number one. Mm -hmm. But if you're talking about the first five, siguro, that's a different way of understanding seniority. Kasi it's possible kung top five, kung lahat ng lima ay tumanggap ng nomination, mm -hmm. yung number five pwede maging number one. So in that sense, is that still seniority? Baka hindi, di ba? So, ibig sabihin nun, may ibang factor na napumasok doon, hindi lang yung seniority. Because strictly, if seniority is to be followed, it, in, my, in my opinion, it should be, okay, kung sino number two, yun na yun. Siya so, na yung pangalawa. So, we are saying, kung seniority, dapat number two to number one, or no seniority at all. Or no seniority at all. Diba? Kung maga, don't call it seniority. Diba? You acknowledge that, yes, those are the first five. The first five in How terms of seniority. How about limiting it to three, sir? Para ano? And under the rules of the JBC, kasi shortly sila, mm. dapat tatlo eh. Yes. Eh kung tatlo lang, eh di ibig sabihin, wala silang wala pwedeng i-eliminate. Yes. Kung may eliminate sila, mag-re-an uli sila, mag-call uli sila. So baka walang matatapos. And I think that's the logic behind the five. So that if ever, they would have a choice. Otherwise, walang sala. Di ba? Mangyayari, tatlo-tatlo. Eh automatically, wala silang magagawa eh. Tatlo kaagad ng tatlo eh. Diba? So, that's the problem there. So, in terms of seniority per se, ako, my personal view of seniority is uh, yung number two maging number one. I don't necessarily agree with that. No, I don't necessarily agree with that. Uh, because, for example, you might not get the best person for the job. No? Uh, but of course, history being the best teacher, no? we've seen what happened. Yes. Diba? Uh, the, the two chief justices who were removed, we're not the most senior at that time. Chief Justice Corona was not the most senior. Chief Justice Serena was not the most senior. So, kung if history is the best teacher, then... <laughs> diba? They should pick a senior justice. Third time, then should be the senior justice. Diba? Ganun yun eh. So, yun yun. Pero, that's, ba, ako kasi, personally, uh, if the seat is open, then you want to determine who's the best person for the job at that point and moving forward, di ba? Who is in the best position to lead the court? So, ganun yun. Sir, inside mm. look na lang, dun sa present five, well, apat na lang kasi nag-decline na si Justice mm. Del Castillo. Would you know if the other justices are okay with any of them being the Chief Justice or are we I, gonna have the same naman, problem? Di ko naman tinanong sa kanila eh. So, I, I, I'm not Anong in a position feeling? to answer that. Anong feeling sa loob? Parang okay ba sila with any of the four or? Mahirap sabihin. <laughs> kasi, hindi, siyempre, di, ko sila, di sila matanong about that eh. I don't, I, don't think I, I don't think I'm in a position to answer that okay, question. Okay, sorry. Last question po. Mm. Um, what do you think is the main challenge or main problem confronting the Supreme Court and how do you say that they start to fix it? Main problem? The, the main problem is, has, is and has always been uh, how to be, you know, how to maintain its credibility, you know, ever since. Hindi naman yung bagong problem eh. Ever since kasi the, the strength of a court, of the Supreme Court, is really its credibility. Yun lang naman talaga, ever since. Uh, and I'm not only talking about the past how many years, no? It's always been that. So the only question really is maintaining that, no? And credibility can be maintained simply by its decisions, di ba? If they render a clearly reasoned out, uh, logically thought out, well-supported decision, even if it's not popular, even if people disagree with it, as long as it's clear that that is the decision and malinaw sa kanila na 
ito yung tamang decision, then its credibility will be enhanced, di ba? Yun, laman, yun naman talaga ever since ang problem ng court. Uh, problem in the sense that that is the burden that the court carries with it as a third branch, no? as the so-called conscience of government. If it is not credible, then, you know, mahirapan talaga sila. So, I think that that is, that and that continues to be the burden of the court to be to be credible, to maintain its credibility all throughout. No? Regardless kung sinong nakaupong presidente, dapat ganun yun. So, again, the only way you can really do that is really by rendering its decisions fairly, accurately, and, you know, well. If that's, that's the only way. Wala na ibang kailangan tingnan. And we don't even need to look at other things. We just look at the decisions that they render. So are you going to be a vocal observer now that you're resigned para to help keep a check on I've the never Supreme been, Court? Ano eh. I've never been vocal just for the sake of being vocal. Yes. You know, there are things that I don't know anything about. So I will not say anything decisions, about things like, I don't know. Would but, you comment more on decisions? I think if I if given a chance to you know, to air an opinion and I think the it, the decision is important enough, yes, of course, because I think that that helps me in my role as uh, as an academic, helps me in my role as as a teacher, you know, to let my students and the other people in the public know that you know, this is what I think. But of course, my my opinion is one of many in the marketplace of ideas. But I think, and, and that this is what I, I mentioned to Chief Justice De Castro in my letter of resignation, that I see my role now outside of the court as, you know, as, as significant in the sense that I can contribute better in terms of that decision make, uh, uh, in, the, in terms of opinion making, in terms of helping people understand the court. You know? Having been part of the court for almost five years, having been uh, an observer outside before, and having been inside, you know, I think. I've gained insight on how the court works, what works for it, what does not work for it, you know? and that insight I think will help in terms of you know, coming up with better opinions of what the court does, what the court should do. You know? And I hope they won't you know, take it against me too much <laughs> when, I, when, I, when I do say things that you know, may not, they may not like to hear <laughs> or read. <laughs> Okay, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much, Attorney Ted, the former spokesperson of the Supreme Court. This has been Rappler Talk. Thank you for watching.